Oh, it was so thrilling. I was really ready to chat with you and talk about how cool it is. And, uh, you know, when you look at the imagery, it all says we are going. And I think it's like, well, uh, maybe not yet. <laughs> not, not today, at least. <laughs> not today. <laughs> so it's such a big project, I guess, you know, not necessarily surprising. Well, I mean, there are so many things that can not necessarily go wrong, but not go to plan. And actually what's happened here is it's got basically four sort of engines at the base. So they're those things that you see that are like that. And actually they're all, they've all been used on the shuttle and stuff. So they've been around, they've been known for a long time and they get reused. But there's one, which is engine number three, uh, that has basically what they need to do is they need to cool down this engine. So there's four engines liquid hydrogen and they're cooling that down to like minus 200 and something celsius it has to be really really cold and i don't know if you know much about florida but it's not that cold <laughs> in the air so they've actually got to do it slowly enough so that the whole thing doesn't just go kaput uh, and what's actually and what they have to do is do this thing called a bleed or otherwise known as an engine chill and so they try to take all four engines down at the same time but what's happened is that engine number three is not really behaving itself and it's not allowing this bleed to happen in the same sort of rate as the other three engines. And it would have been picked up earlier, except when they did their last what they call wet uh, dress rehearsal, wet re rehearsal in June, um, that was actually where the line for the hydrogen out when it does the bleed, that's actually where they found a leak. So unfortunately, they didn't get to the point where they could test it in the last dress rehearsal. Wow. And, you know, it, it wasn't the first obstacle. There were some weather challenges and, as you also talked about, those hydrogen leaks. So, you know, they, they do have a couple of other windows. What do these windows mean? Are they particularly weather-conducive windows, these sort of windows that appear for NASA to uh, allow this launch to happen? Yeah, this is a really good question. So whenever NASA plan and launch, they also need to, it's not just, you know, when's it good to send it off Earth? It's actually, when can we actually keep track of it, right? And so for the next three days, let's say they miss this launch window, which I think they're going to, uh, they can't actually launch it for about three days because basically it'll be in an eclipse in terms of where it is in the moon's shadow, so the Earth's shadow. So they, they won't actually be able to communicate with it. So they need to wait another three days. Now, if it stays on the launch pad and if it's uh, something that the engineers can go, right, we can engineer something here quickly, it's just a systematic programming thing that we can fix, we may see it go on uh, September the 2nd. Um, but I think that will actually be the third for us because that's at the very nice time of 2.48 in the morning, um, Australian Eastern Standard Time, Bev. So I don't know that we'll be... Uh, we won't be waiting up. ...talking about that at the time. <laughs> but unfortunately, if it doesn't, if it doesn't actually uh, stay on the pad, if it has to go back to the VAB, which is the building, the vehicle building, it's, it's going to be probably um, the next launch window, which uh, maybe September 19th to October 4, or after that, it's October 17th through to the 31st. So it's really a watch this space but for something that's cost uh, NASA since 2006 of almost 50 billion US dollars it's probably worth the wait. Absolutely and, and absolutely not worth risking and we know of course and we've talked about this before that this is not going to be this is not manned this particular mission um, is, is, is not going up with humans although it is taking up um, it was it was a sheep, Dolly. Was it Dolly? Dolly the sheep? Oh, it's Sean the sheep. Sean. So that's Easter's little representation. <laughs> you know, I think it's like the art is the you know the Wallace and Gromit franchise. I think the, the yeah Sean the sheep always <laughs> hilarious. My dad will love that very much. And we've got three, three mannequins as well. So we've got Munikun Campos, who is uh, this wonderful dressed figure, and he's wearing a spacesuit that they're actually going to dress um, the future astronauts in. And then there's Helga and Zohar, and they're actually, it's a little bit grim when you look at pictures of them, actually, because, you know, uh, Munikin Campos is in this wonderful space suit and, and he's a full body. And then you, they're like, oh, and there's two female torsos. And they're, they're just these sort of <laughs> bodies with, you know, the shape strapped in. And they're just basically, um, one of them's equipped with a bunch of, um, well, they're both equipped with radiation sensors, but one of them has a vest. So they're checking whether they're astro rad. Um, the radiation suits can basically uh, help them withstand the, the pressures and environments in space with yeah. radiation. And so, if if they are lucky enough to get a, you know, to get within those next windows, um, tell us a little bit about what this mission is trying to accomplish. 
So this is the first mission. This is essentially one big test. Does the rocket work? <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> and then do the comms work? Can we get it out there, go around the moon? Can we actually uh, go further past the moon than Apollo 13 did? Of course, they had people on it and this one doesn't. Can we get it back? Can we um, actually successfully do this re-entry? At 40,000 kilometres an hour, Bev, we're talking very uncomfortable 2,800 degrees Celsius. Then we've got to get it land, splash down and recover it, right? That's just the first test. After that, we've got Artemis II. We're looking at putting people on that, but they will go around the moon and come back. And then after that, we're looking at trying to build this gateway eventually to have that go around the moon, build a base on the moon, and actually have the first uh, woman and person of color land on the moon, which is absolutely brilliant, and return to the lunar surface, really. Yeah, which is so exciting. And really, you know, it we'll starts a different kind of space race than um, than we've had in the past at a time when you know we know the International Space Station is decommissioning um, and and those sort of international cooperations may not be top of mind for for some countries yeah that's probably fair there are a lot of countries that are involved in this though so we've got Canada we've got Japan um, and there are lots of other countries that are interested in going to the moon in the next couple of years things that I didn't even know till I started having a look at it you United Arab Emirates actually would like to to put a land on the moon we've actually seen this probably goes back to the reason why we shouldn't just send things because you know maybe it'll be all right you know oh she'll be right no we don't need to do that because we've seen things like Israel uh, tried to land a very sheet the the lander that crashed we've had um chandrayaan 2 from india uh they tried to get a lander and a rover on the moon and, and that crash landed so we're going to probably see japan south korea india russia uae probably all trying to get to the moon in the next couple of years it's just a different type of probably less politically motivated space race yeah Thank you, as always, for talking us through things. It's a pity about tonight, but no doubt uh, there'll be another opportunity. Thanks, Claire. Thank you, Bev.